Hi, this is Jeff Spence, your Math 120 instructor for the Community College Denver, and this is uh, my video over the answers to the Week 2 discussion set, which covers these sections here. So, number one, it says use the Venn diagram to answer the following questions. So, the universal set is people in a meeting. Um, some of them are male, some of them are teachers, some of them are both male and teachers, and some are neither male nor teachers. So, uh, Let's go over each answer. Well, actually, let me just go over each region again. So this male, the seven, seven would represent the males that aren't teachers at the meeting. The 11 would represent the males that are teachers at the meeting. The 15 would represent the females that are teachers at the meeting. And the 20 would represent the females that aren't teachers. So neither male nor teacher. All right, so it says how many male teachers are in the meeting. That would be 11. Let's see. 11. All right. Um, how many female teachers are in the meeting? Female teachers. So they're not in the male circle. They're here. It's the 15. How many men in the meeting are not teachers? So that would be these seven people here. Okay. Because they got to be male. So they're in the male circle, but they're not teachers. So it would be this seven. How many women in the meeting are not teachers? So they're not in the teacher circle, and they're not in the male circle. They're the 20. They're the neither nor 20. How many teachers are in the meeting? Well, teachers circle has 11 that are male and 15 that are female. So 26 teachers in the meeting. How many persons in the meeting are not teachers? Well, there's 26 people here that are teachers. There are 27 people that are outside of the teacher circle, 20 plus 7, so 27 are not teachers. And how many people are in the meeting? Well, that's all these numbers added up, so 27 plus 26 is going to be 53. All right, next it says evaluate 2 times x minus 3 quantity squared for x equals 2. So this is going to be 2 times 2 minus 3 quantity squared, I'm going to write it like this, uh, minus 5. All right, so we got to work on the innermost parentheses first. So that's 2 minus 3. So I'm going to do 2 times negative 1. I'm going to square that. So quantity squared and then minus 5. So then the next thing to do is the exponent. Remember, parentheses, exponent, multiplication, divisions, and then additions and subtractions. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So negative 1 squared. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. When you square any number, you get a positive number. So it's really 2 times positive 1 minus 5. So now I have to do the multiplication. 2 times 1, which is 2, minus 5. 2 minus 5 is negative 3. Final answer, negative 3. Next one, evaluate 4x, uh, 4xy minus 3x plus 5 for x equals 2 and y equals negative 3. So first I'm just going to plug it in. So it's 4 times 2 times uh, negative 3 minus 3 times 2, oops, sorry, 2 um, plus 5. So i got to do my multiplications first from left to right. So 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 times negative 3 is negative 24, and I got to do minus, and then I'm going to do my other subtraction, or sorry, my other multiplication here, 3 times 2, which is 6 plus 5. So then I just do my additions and subtractions from left to right. Negative 24 minus 6 is negative 30, so negative 30 plus 5. Negative 30 plus 5 gives me negative 25. Final answer. All right, then next, I got to solve these equations and check the answer. So when we solve the equations, we're trying to isolate the variable, get the variable by itself. So we do the opposite, uh, the opposite uh, operations in reverse order. So I'm going to add five here first, and when I add five to both sides, it cancels the minus five, and I get three h equals fifteen. It's a little hard to show that work on the computer, so I'm just saying that I added five to both sides. Adding 5 cancels the minus 5. 10 plus 5 is 15. And then I got to divide by 3. So if I divide by 3, I'll get h equals, I'm dividing by 3 because it's 3 times h. 
And so to isolate h, I got to do the inverse operation. So divide by 3. And 15 divided by 3 is 5. So to check the answer, it's just like plugging it in like on the last one. So it's 3 times 5 um, minus, oops, sorry, minus 5 equal to 10. Well, uh, oops, so 3 times 5, oh boy, 3 times 5 is 15, and 15 minus 5 does equal 10, so we're good to go. Let's check. All right, next one. 15 minus 7w equals 1. So the first thing I got to do is subtract 15. So if I subtract 15 on the left side, the 15 will go away, but I still have a minus 7w. And if you subtract 15 from 1, you get negative 14. Then the next step, since it's negative 7 times w, I got to divide by 7. So I'm going to divide by or sorry, divide by negative 7, and that will give me w, so it's isolated. And negative 14 divided by negative 7, a negative divided by a negative is a positive, should give me positive 2. So I need to check, is 15 minus 7 times 2 equal to 1? Well, uh, 15 minus 14 equals 1. So we're good to go. That's good, it checks. All right, next. There's some word problems here, and I want to solve each word problem. Um, I might have to pause it to set up to the proportion here, but that's okay. So it says the number of gallons of water used when taking shower is proportional to the time in the shower. Proportional means uh, it's related, and we're going to set up a proportion, uh, set up a proportion to solve this equation. A shower lasting five minutes uses 30 gallons of water. How much water is used in a shower lasting 11 minutes? Well, the first sentence it tells me that a five-minute shower, uh, a five-minute shower, is takes thirty gallons of water. Okay, so I have minutes on the top, gallons on the bottom. It says how much water is used in a shower lasting eleven minutes. Well, I have eleven. So since I have minutes on the top, I'm going to put eleven minutes there, and I want to know how many gallons it uses. Um, let me pause it and show you this in a more proportion way here. Okay, so now I have a better looking thing here. Five minutes, is, or sorry, five minutes is to 30 gallons, as 11 minutes is to x gallons. And to solve a proportion, we call, the technique is called cross multiplying. So you take the upper left and multiply it by the lower right, so that's going to give us 5x, and then you take the lower left and multiply it by the upper right. And 30 times 11 is 330. So that gives us 330. Then the next step is just divide by 5. So 330 divided by 5 gives us 66. Now remember, is that what's the unit here? What are we asking? How much water? So 66 gallons. That unit matters. It's important. It's not minutes. It's gallons. Okay, the next one, it says, an object's weight on the moon is proportional to its weight on Earth. For example, an astronaut with a spacesuit on weighed 360 pounds on Earth, but just 60 pounds on the moon. What is the moon weight of a person who weighs 186 pounds on Earth? So, let's set up the proportion. Okay, so the ratio that they give me first is 360 pounds on Earth is to 60 pounds on the moon. And I want to know what their 186 pounds on Earth would be on the moon. So Earth to Earth, moon to moon. We're going to cross multiply again to solve this. So we're going to have 360 times x equals 186 times 60. 186, 186 times 60 gives me 11,160. Then this, oops, sorry, this is 160. Then to solve that, we need to divide by 360. Gets us 31. So x is 31. And what does that represent? This would be pounds on the moon. All right, next one. It says you weigh 229 pounds and go on a diet losing 4 pounds per month. So it says how long before you weigh 113 pounds? Well, the way to look at this is I'm losing four pounds every month, all right? And it wants to know how long I, how long before I weighed 113 pounds. 
So that's going to be my variable. X is going to represent the number of months that it takes to weigh 113 pounds. Well, I lose 4 pounds per month. So that's represented by negative 4X. That's the, that's represent, that negative 4X represents the amount of pounds lost uh, after X months. All right, hopefully that makes sense. But then I want to know my weight. So my weight is starts at 229 and I lose four pounds per month. And I want to know when my weight equals 113 pounds. So really I'm just solving this equation here. 229 minus four X equals 113. After how long, after how many months will it take me to weigh 113 pounds? Well, the first step is to subtract the 229 pounds from both sides so that uh, gets rid of the 229 on the left side, 113 minus 229, 113 minus 229 is negative 116. And then I have to divide by negative four. So if I divide negative 116 by four, I should get 29, let me double check. Yep, 29 months. That's the answer to the first one. Okay, the next one, it says, if you continue at this rate, what would you weigh at the end of your first year? So it wants to know what the weight is, and the weight is, remember, 229 minus four times the number of months, right? Well, after the first year, how many months have passed? 12 months. So this, we just have to plug in 12 into, the, into this uh, expression, 229 minus four times 12, and we'll lose 48 pounds, we'll, we'll weigh 181 pounds at the end of one year. Uh, next one says you can lease a computer for 375 down and a monthly fee of $75, or you can buy it for 3000. So it says after how many months would it be an advantage to buy? Well, here's the thing. When you lease this computer, we're assuming that you're gonna pay 375 to start, and every month after that, you're gonna pay 75. So normally, you would, after a while, you'd want to return the computer like you do on a lease, but we just want to see how many months it would take for it basically to equal 3,000. After that, if you just pay 3,000 to buy it, you're going to save money because uh, we're assuming every month you're going to get a $75 fee. So the fee to lease, the, how much it costs to lease is the 375 that you spend at the beginning plus the 75 um, per month which was going to represent by X. It says after how many months. And I want to set that equal to 3,000. I want to see how many months it takes for it to equal the 3,000 that I would cost to pay, or to buy, excuse me. So I'm going to subtract the 375 from both sides first. So 3,000 minus 375 is 2625. So I have 75X um, equals 26. 25. Then to figure out the number of months, I divide by 75. So 2625 divided by 75 is 35 months. So at 35 months, the cost will be equal. So it makes sense then that after 35 months, after 35 months, you're only paying 3,000, but for leasing, you're going to pay more and more because you're going to keep paying that 75 monthly fee. On the 36th month, you're going to pay thirty or three thousand seventy-five if you lease. So if you're going to lease this computer, you want to understand that you want to lease it for thirty-five months or less, or just buy the thing. Okay. Next one, it says find out how long you you would lease before the cost is twenty-seven twenty-five or twenty-seven seventy-five. So the cost to lease is thirty three seventy-five plus the seventy-five times the number of months. We want to know when that cost is twenty-seven seventy-five. So same process. We're going to subtract three seventy-five first. So twenty-seven seventy-five minus three seventy-five is twenty-four hundred. So I have seventy-five x equals twenty-four hundred, and then I'm going to divide by seventy-five. Twenty-four hundred divided by seventy-five is thirty-two. All right, now I just want to summarize one thing before I finish, is that both of these problems are linear expressions, 8 and 9. 
and seven and six and seven are proportional expressions, and we solve proportions by cross multiplying. The key word that you're going to see to know whether to set up a proportion or some sort of linear expression like this is this word proportional. And I've italicized it here in the problems. But and when you get to the test, they're going to be mixed together. So the key word that you'll notice when we say proportional, you want to set up a proportion. And if we don't, then you want to set up some basic linear expression like this and solve it for x or plug in a certain value for x. So that's basically it. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.